It's another edition of the Trading Tips video newsletter, teaching you how to become a successful trader today. This video newsletter is brought to you by TradingTips.com. Welcome to this TradingTips.com video newsletter. In this episode, we'll be looking at the first of two technical indicators John Bollinger derived from his famous Bollinger Bands, Bollinger Bandwidth. Using Bollinger Bandwidth, traders can determine if a stock is likely to have a major price swing. Without further ado, let's begin. But first, a brief review. We covered Bollinger Bands in great depth in episode 20 of the TradingTips.com video newsletter. So if you're new to them, please consider reviewing that video. For everyone else, however, here is a refresher. Bollinger Bands consist of an upper and lower band that are equidistant from a midpoint, which is the stock's 20-day simple moving average. Sometimes this midpoint is depicted as a middle band, but often it is not. The upper band takes the 20-day SMA and adds the standard deviation times 2, while the lower band subtracts the same value from the 20-day SMA. The result is a measure of past volatility, which can help predict future volatility. Furthermore, the upper and lower bands often work like resistance and support, respectively. But it is the width of the bands we are concerned with today, as this can predict major price swings. If a stock's Bollinger Bands are far apart, this means the stock has been volatile in the recent past. If the bands are close together, this means the stock has been consolidating. In either case, the most likely scenario is a reversal of the trend. Stocks with wide bands have been volatile and are due to stabilize, while stocks with tight bands have been consolidating and are likely to break one way or another. It is in this latter case in which Bollinger Band Width is most useful. However, it is important to note that Bollinger Band Width does not predict which direction the swing will be. It could predict a major breakout, or it could predict a crash. In order to tell which is most likely, you need to use Bollinger Bandwidth in conjunction with your favorite technical indicators and or chart pattern screens. But the question remains, how tight do the bands have to be in order for it to be significant? Well, to begin with, bandwidth is technically defined as the value of the upper band minus the value of the lower band. However, this is all relative. A value of 5 on a $100 stock would not mean the same thing as 5 on a $20 stock. To help standardize values, you should think of Bollinger Bandwidth in terms of percentage, with bandwidths of 10% or less typically considered tight. However, even this is relative, as some stocks are more typically volatile than others, so Bollinger Bandwidth needs to be adjusted for the stock's normal volatility. This may sound overly complex, but the reality is that Bollinger Bandwidth is one of the easiest technical indicators to simply eyeball. You don't really need to do the calculations, they are just good to know as a starting point. Instead, you can scan charts for instances of what appear to be tight Bollinger Bands and compare them to previous instances of similarly tight bands for that same stock. Then look at what this stock did in the previous instances. Was there a major price swing following the tightening? Remember, don't worry about which direction the stock spiked, only that it did or didn't spike. For direction, you'll need to use other indicators. The value of Bollinger Band width is to simply predict a major move. To illustrate this, here is an example of a stock chart featuring two instances in which the stock's Bollinger Bands tightened. In the first instance, the stock broke out higher, and in the second instance, the stock crashed. You may also notice that there is a black line below the price chart illustrating the band width. You may find this useful in cases like this one, in which the price chart is not all that easy to eyeball. You can add Bollinger Bandwidth to your charts at StockCharts.com by selecting Bull Bandwidth from the Indicators drop-down menu. For parameters, the default 20,2 refers to the 20-day symbol moving average and the times 2 multiplier used in creating the Bollinger Bands. We recommend that you use these default values unless for some reason you are using different values for your Bollinger Bands. We hope you've enjoyed this TradingTips.com video newsletter. Thank you for watching and good trading. This Trading Tips video newsletter has been brought to you by Manny Backus's First Hour Trading System. Every day there's money to be made in the first hour of stock trading. This is the world of day trading, not for novices, unless you have a system. The First Hour Trading System.
Visit FirstHourTrading.com now and sign up for a free 30-day trial. You could make enough in the first hour of your day to take the rest of the day off. View more Trading Tips videos. Visit TradingTips.com. Sign up for our free video newsletters and become a successful trader today.